physical presence of the public cannot be implemented safely or practically. I further move that the task force may conduct this meeting electronically through a dedicated video and audio conferencing line, that the public may access this meeting by registering through the meeting link on the track a plan amendment webpage of the SSPA website at HTTPS colon slash slash www.fairfaxcounty.gov slash planning dash development slash plan dash amendments slash SSPA slash south slash track dash plan dash amendment or by calling 1-844-621-3956 uh, TTY711 and entering access code 2336-058-5775. It is so moved. Is there a second? This is second. John, I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? The motion has passed. Are there any other motions? Thanks. Yes. Uh, lastly, I move that this meeting must be conducted online during the current emergency in order to discharge the lawful purposes, duties, and responsibilities of the SSPA task force. I see a second. John, a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion is carried. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, everyone. So tonight's meeting will be focusing on the Brandon Avenue proposed amendment. That's at 6235 and 6245 Brandon Avenue. Uh, David Stinson from staff will be presenting on the existing conditions, adopted plan language, scope of the board's authorization and self storage uses in, in the county. Uh, Doug Lesher from staff uh, will be presenting on the uh, Springfield design guidelines, which are under development. And then uh, Lynn Strobel, uh, representing the nominator, will be presenting as well. Uh, at appropriate times, we will open the floor to questions and comments generated by the presentations as we go along. At the end of the presentations, we will have a period for any general comments or questions from members of the public and task force. As always, interested members of the public are encouraged to provide us with their comments. The time for public comments during meetings may be limited by the need to take care of our business and will vary from meeting to meeting depending on the time available. Public comments can always be submitted for the consideration of the task force by email at uh, leedist, that's L-E-E-D-I-S-T, at fairfaxcounty.gov. Before each Monday meeting, comments received by Friday at 10 a.m. will be distributed to the task force members prior to that Monday meeting. Um, regarding future meetings, our October 11th meeting has been canceled. Our next meeting will be October 18th. That meeting will be online as usual. Our ability to meet online depends on the, con the continuation of the county's declaration of emergency. It is my understanding that the declaration is likely to extend at least until the end of 2021 if pandemic conditions remain what they are now. If nothing changes, we may need to start meeting in person in the new year. Even while meeting in person, the Freedom of Information Act provides an avenue for members of the task force who cannot attend in person due to health concerns, either their own or of those they care for, to participate remotely as long as we have a quorum meeting in person. To allow this, that to happen, we would need to adopt a written policy laying out procedures for those members who get to get prior approval to participate remotely. We'll discuss this in more detail in the future as needed. And with that, um, let's, let's get moving here. So I will uh, turn things over to, I believe it's David Stinson. I think you think that. Um, and can someone give me the um, function where I can share my screen, please? Make me the presenter. Hi, can everyone hear me? 
We can hear you fine. Yes. Okay. Hey. Thanks. Sorry, David. I'm. I'm do, you, uh, do you have it now? I think I. Do it now? I think so. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, I think everything's checked for you. So. It's not working in its normal way. Um, can... <laughs> this meeting is cursed. Oh, wait a minute. Now it is. Okay. Now it is. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had all boxes checked for you as a panelist, but some for some reason, I guess it wasn't working. Okay. Now it looks like it's some. Um... Okay. Yeah. We can see your screen, David. Okay, good evening. Um, I am David Stenson with the Department of Planning and Development. David, this is Laura. Sorry, you're showing your notes screen. Oh, sorry about that. Um, you might have to change which screen you're looking at on the um, very top. I think it says pick screen share something like that at the very um I'm sorry about this. It, normally, I have no issues with this. Um, David, on the right where it says automatic under monitor, in the top right under your PowerPoint, this in click use presenter view, I think that's where you're supposed to put. I mean, that's the problem. Okay, let's try this. Technology is always. I'm going to try fun. presenting the PDF. I, I've made a PDF of this. Let me. I'm going to try. I'm going to present the PDF of this. David, perhaps you could just uh, get started by telling us what you uh, want to tell us. And if we can't see your presentation, we'll just not see your presentation. David, let me try running the PowerPoint, if you don't mind, and then you can scroll through or the, the PDF if you want to start and I'll pull up the PowerPoint. The PDF. I love just. Um... All right, um, so I guess should I just start without the presentation, Laura? Or... Yeah, I'm going to start. I'm going to pull it up for you as soon as I can get it started. Okay, well, um, 
apologize for the technical difficulties. Um, so this um, this evening we're going to um, be presenting. You know, um, well, first this evening, I want to say I'm here with Laura Arsenault, Doug Losher, and Liz Haig of the Department of Planning and Development, and Farouk Hesingen and Tom Burke from the Fairfax County Department of Transportation are also in attendance this evening. Um, we're going to review the proposed plan amendment for 6235 and 6245 Brandon Avenue. Um, this evening's presentation will provide information regarding the background of this proposed plan amendment, um, the scope of the board authorization, existing conditions, and the adopted comprehensive plan recommendation. Um, Doug, Doug Losher will also provide an overview of self storage trends and design considerations. We will also discuss the next steps of the process and conclude um, the, the Department of Planning presentation with questions and, and a discussion. Additionally, there will also be a presentation by the nominator of the plan amendment, followed by the task force discussion and, um, and general questions and uh, comments. Um, I'll first start by um, providing um, some background information. Um, this plan amendment is the result of a site specific plan amendment nomination, which was um, submitted during the South County site specific plan amendment process. Um, during the site specific plan amendment review process, staff and the um, leadership task force reviewed the nomination in context with recommendations for the larger Springfield Community Business Center. After review, um, staff did not consider the self storage proposal as compatible with the comprehensive plan recommendations and objectives of the Springfield CBC and therefore recommend against including this nomination on the work program. However, the lead district task force and the planning commission recommended adding this nomination to the to the work program. The board um, then deferred authorization of this plan amendment until June so staff could conduct research on urban storage use to potentially address staff concerns. The nominator could conduct additional community outreach. Um, the outcomes of the research demonstrated that this type of use in other places has been um, able to incorporate certain design features and um, community benefits that are also desired by, by the county's comprehensive plan, um, with the exception of the land use itself. Um, therefore, this plan amendment should consider how the comprehensive plan adjusted objectives can still be met with the proposed self storage use. Okay, um, and Laura, I did see your screen briefly. Um, yep, I'm, I'm almost there. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, right there. Uh, I'll next move on to the um, to the board authorization. Um, so the Board of Supervisors operate this plan amendment on June 22nd, 2021. Um, the subject area of this plan amendment, you know, is located within the Springfield Community, um, Springfield Community Business Center, um, Springfield Planning District, and the Lease Supervisor District. Oh, go back one slide, Laura. It's great. As stated previously, um, this plan amendment was based on a site-specific plan amendment nomination submitted during the South County site specific plan amendment nomination process. Um, the nomination proposed 175,000 square foot, seven story self storage facility with ground floor retail up to 3.0 floor area ratio at 6235 Brandon Avenue. And um, the geography and the geography of the original plan of, of the subject area is shown in the aerial photo on your left. Um, the Board of Supervisors authorized the consideration of a comprehensive plan amendment for self storage use for the nomination, but also in conjunction with a neighborhood parcel located at 6245 Brandon Avenue that is developed um, with the Marriott Town Place Suites. Um, the expanded subject area for, for the Board of Authorization is shown in the aerial photo on the right. Uh, next slide, please. As, um, as previously stated, um, the Board of Supervisors requested that staff evaluate an option for self storage use with community serving retail or alternative non residential use on the ground floor up to an intensity of 3.0 floor area ratio in conjunction with a neighboring parcel developed of a hotel. Um, the option should consider innovative architecture that does not present as a traditional self storage 
and a site layout and other measures that achieve the goals of the Springfield CBC plan. Um, this plan amendment will also be reviewed concurrently with an application to reserve the property. Um, at this time, a rezoning application has not been filed. The property owners plan to file a rezoning application shortly after additional feedback is provided by staff and the SSPA task force. Uh, next slide, please. Um, I will now provide an overview of the um, existing conditions. The subject property is surrounded by um, Interstate 95 to the east, the Navy Federal Credit Union office building to the north, and retail and restaurant uses to the south and west along Commerce Street. The area to the north, just outside of the CBC, is planned for and developed with single-family detached residential uses. Um, next slide, please. Um, the subject property um, is located. The subject property located at 6235 Brandon Avenue um, consists of a 1.4 acre vacant parcel that has vehicular access under Brandon Avenue through a driveway north of the Jason Hotel, but has frontage on Augusta Drive. Oh, can you do next slide, please? Thank you. Um, Augusta Drive is um, privately owned, but is also a publicly accessible road through a public access easement, which parallels Interstate 95 and crosses under Commerce Street to the south. Um, this parcel is vacant except for a, gra a gravel surface parking lot and an underground stormwater management facility associated with the adjacent hotel. Um, the site was recently subject to a notice of violation for unpermitted vehicle, vehicle, vehicle storage and a contractor's office and shop on the site. Um, this parcel is zoned to the C6 district and is planned for a mix of uses up to 0.4 floor area ratio at the base level with an option for office use up to 125,000 square feet and a maximum height of 160 feet to a 2.0 floor area ratio. Um, this site was entitled for a freestanding restaurant in the year 2000 that was never constructed. Um, next slide, please. Um, the subject parcel located at 6245 Brennan Avenue contains a town suites hotel that was constructed in 2003. This hotel parcel is two acres and zoned to the C6 district. It is planned for a mix of uses up to 0.4 floor area ratio at the base level, with an option for a mix of uses up to a 1.6 floor area ratio. Um, the existing hotel has many of the characteristics that the plan seeks, with a building that frames the street with little setback from Brandon Avenue and Commerce Street and parking in the rear of the building accessed off the same driveway from which 6235 Brandon Avenue is accessed. Um, no change to the land use on this hotel parcel is um, proposed by this plan amendment. Um, next slide, please. Um, the Springfield CBC shown on the map in pink is part of a larger Franconia Springfield, it's part of the larger Franconia Springfield area which is comprised of the Springfield CPZ, CBC and the Franconia Transit Station area. Um, the Springfield, Springfield CBC is also a commercial revitalization district. Um, landing in A through G part, were part of the Springfield CBC and are generally located west of Interstate 95 along the intersection of 95 and Old Key Mill Road. The CBC functions as a neighborhood and community serving retail and service center and is visioned to function as a community serving urban village of the larger Franconia Springfield area. Um, the adjacent Franconia Springfield Transit Station area, shown in yellow on the map, includes the Joe Alexander Transportation Center, which includes a metro and VRE station, commuter parking, and, and local and regional bus service. The transit station area also includes the Springfield Town Center, a regional shopping center mall with plans to redevelop into a mixed use town center. Um, next slide, please. Um, the subject property is um, located with an area designated by the comprehensive plan as landing in A of the Springfield Community Business Center and the Springfield Commercial Revitalization District. Um, the comprehensive plan envisions the area to become the central node of activity within the CBC, featuring urban, pedestrian-oriented, residential and commercial mixed-use development at medium to high intensities. The envisioned mixed-use development would consist of multi-story and high-rise buildings with street-level retail, civic spaces, and, and amenities developed under a common design or architectural theme. The adjacent Commerce Street corridor is envisioned as a multimodal main street containing, connecting the CBC to the Franconia Springfield Transit Station area located east of 95. As stated previously, 
the comprehensive plan recommendations contain an additional development options specific to the vacant subject parcel at 6235 Brandon Avenue, which recommends up to 125,000 square feet of office use at a 2.0 floor area ratio, a maximum height of 160 feet to serve as a gateway feature to the Franconia Springfield area. Next slide, please. Um, next, Doug Losher from the revitalization section of the Department of Planning and Development will provide more information regarding urban design and self-storage trends. Great. Uh, thank you, David, and uh, thank you, everyone, for your patience. Um, I'm going to build on David's previous comments and uh, talk a little bit more about urban design considerations. The reason that we're approaching this, uh, especially tonight, is that the discussions around self-storage has centered uh, in a large way around design issues. And so we just wanted to set the context that this is really part of a larger set of urban design considerations. And this, uh, these are based on both comprehensive plan and design guidelines for this area. So that would include guidance for both public and private improvements that reinforce community character. And that means buildings, streetscapes, and any public spaces that are recommended for the area. So the map that's shown here is part of the framework plan for the Franconia Springfield area. And you'll see the uh, site we're discussing is the red dot in the upper right of the map. And this plan overall identifies the key connections into the district, and also it designates particular streets as what is described as priority pedestrian corridors, and those are shown in blue. We'll talk a little bit more about them later. Uh, in addition, there are specific land unit recommendations uh, for this area that call for a corner plaza at the intersection of Commerce Street and Brandon Avenue that would create a gateway to the commercial district. And then finally, I wanted to mention that the urban design gui guidelines for Springfield recommends that new building design be considered in the context of where it is located, uh, taking cues from surrounding buildings. So this approach is intended to create, at least over time, a common architectural theme for the community. Can we do the next slide, please? So you'll see here on the right, the intersection of Brandon Avenue and Commerce Street, which I, as I mentioned, are both designated as priority pedestrian corridors. And the illustration that's on the left shows some typical streetscape elements that could be considered. Um, because there are a number of interrelated transportation issues for this site, we'll be discussing the specific streetscape recommendations more uh, at the next task force meeting. So tonight we wanted to just focus on other aspects such as the self storage building design itself. Uh, next slide. Thank you. Um, I think we're going the wrong direction here. Um, oh, let me see. Oh, could you, I'm sorry, could you go back again? Next, yes, okay, thank you. Okay, so, and oops, there we go. There we go. As David mentioned earlier, uh, the staff has studied whether and how self-storage can effectively be incorporated into urban areas such as Springfield by researching the trends and best practices that are out there. And as you can see, the national trends show a, a definite shift in how these storage buildings are designed, uh, really moving to more of a multi-story storage uh, building in urban areas. And with that comes some new design approaches. These types of facilities are generally five or more stories and sometimes they aim for a more aesthetically appealing building design. They'll use architectural screening um, and in some ways take on the appearance of another use. Next slide. Thank you. So here's photos that il illustrate that shift uh, somewhat. You'll see a transition in the design on the left, a typical type of low profile buildings they're sometimes quite bulky and they're massing, um, often have blank walls, and sometimes they will have visible storage hallways. 
the newer approach to design, which you see on the right, uh, includes more architectural elements that can replicate the features of other types of buildings. Uh, next slide, please. And here's some examples of um, how those self storage buildings uh, in different parts of the country can mimic the appearance and architectural elements of offices, of residential, or even hotel uses. And all that's done in order to blend more seamlessly into their surroundings. These buildings typically have entrances directly onto the street, uh, minimal setback, often have detailed ground floor uh, elements such as awnings and glass frontage. And usually the parking is interior to the building. Uh, and there is no visible surface parking or loading. Next slide. So in terms of facade design, many of these cases show how using false building features and details, particularly on upper floors, are used to somewhat conceal the storage use and better fit into the community setting. The challenge for a lot of these is how to strike a good balance between styles and details and avoid appearing overly artificial. Next slide. And on the ground floor, some of these best practices show a trend towards mixed use or at least some type of ground floor activation. Uh, in some cases, that's retail or other uses. The example that's shown here on the left really is to call attention to how architectural details can replicate a storefront design that fits better into a commercial district. And on the right, this example shows how retail can help to activate a street corner, especially where the location and market allows that. So in other cases where retail is not possible, ground floors can be dedicated to community meeting space, maker studios, or low cost business startup space. Next slide. So overall, the more community friendly projects really pay close attention to the local styles and colors and details that reflect nearby buildings and architecture, as this example from a Florida community shows. And the building elements listed on the left would typically be used to evaluate development projects such as this, often during the zoning review phase of a project. Next slide. In terms of local design context for Springfield, the commercial area definitely has a somewhat eclectic mix of building styles, uh, but overall the image is that of a modern community with more contemporary styles and buildings. So this aesthetic has influenced the development of many recent projects, including the Springfield Branding Initiative, which you'll see on the left, is a series of gateway signs around the commercial district that'll debut next year, as well as the new Springfield commuter parking facility, and which is actually breaking ground later this week. Next slide. And so as we look around the adjacent commercial district, you'll see a predominance of mostly contemporary architecture, and that would include the Springfield Town Center, um, as well as the nearby shopping centers and hotels, and in particular, the adjacent town place suites. This is a type of warm contemporary style that features brick and other masonry materials in lighter color, palettes, and tones. Um, the design elements such as these, um, again, would be uh, considered in later zoning review processes where this type of detail is, is more appropriate. For now, if you, next slide, please. For now, we'd like to just note the visual prominence of this site, which is particularly from the approach on Commerce Street shown here, um, where this proposed structure would be one of the first buildings one would see when crossing the bridge. And so for that reason, the urban design considerations we've discussed tonight uh, would focus on how the building relates to its adjacent uses, such as the hotel, in terms of height, color, style, or materials, and also the streetscape and the corner plaza that was mentioned earlier. And those topics will, as we mentioned, be 
discuss further at the next meeting. So with that, I would like to wrap up and turn it back over to you, David. Thank you. Uh, we can now just open it up for questions and uh, discussion comments. Okay, thank you both. Um, so questions or comments? Uh, let's start with members of the public. Uh, any questions or comments from members of the public? I see two hands are raised, Ed. And oh, yes, and, and thank you, Steve. I just I, I should mention that, yeah, uh, I would ask anyone who has something they wish to say to uh, uh, raise their hand, uh, and Steve, perhaps you can explain how to do that. Yes. Um, let's see. Or, if you, or I, I can. If, if you okay. if you click where it says participants, and then it, a, a box will open, and, and then at the bottom right of that box, you'll see a, a, a hand, and if you click on that hand, you'll you'll raise your own hand. And then we'll see that and we can call on you. And then I would ask after uh, you've, you've been called on to then click that again to lower your hand so that we don't think uh, you're trying to get in again. And with that, do we have any hands raised? I see uh, Bruce Wagoner, I will uh, unmute you. Go ahead, Bruce, welcome. Yeah, welcome, thanks. Uh... Thanks for uh, unmuting me. Uh, Martin and I met uh, well, along with Gail Nettle about this uh, yesterday. Uh, I think I'll defer to Marta as far as questions. I don't mean to put Marta on the spot, but uh, generally speaking, let me, let me ask this one particular point that was brought up and then I'll defer to Marta. And that's the uh, joining of the two addresses. I didn't understand that before it was just, fo they just focused on one street address and now they seem to, the county seems to have merged the two. What is the point of that? Is that uh, we're worried that that might be some kind of a by right uh, advantage or something? We're not sure. We'd like to have that addressed. Thank you. Hey, the reason that this, in order for this use to be implemented, um, it has to be um, the parcel that's proposed to this use has to be combined with the hotel parcel, because basically under the zoning ordinance, the self storage is a secondary use and the hotel, I'm sorry, yeah, and the hotel is the primary use. In order to implement this under the zoning ordinance, it needs to be combined with the adjacent site, which is similar to how the storage, self storage in the McLean CBC was implemented. So, uh, David, to be clear, are there any changes being contemplated for the hotel? There are um, no changes being contemplated for the hotel site. Though, if I understand it correctly, and please correct me if I'm wrong about this, there are some contemplated changes for that for that uh, green space at the entrance to the hotel at the corner of Commerce and Brandon. Am I right about that? Yes, entrances, yes, yes, changes for the, the green space and perhaps streetscape, but there's no changes to the actual use of the property or the floor area ratio or the building. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, Bruce, did that answer your question? I suppose I've got onto it a little bit. I'm still wondering who that advantage is somehow. I, I don't mean to be skeptical of that, but I, I don't, I don't well, understand. I, 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 well, this. Go, go ahead. ahead if there's someone who wish. Uh, this use cannot be implemented under, um, under the current zoning, this use can only be implemented under secondary use because they're, the proposal of 3.0 FAR, again, doesn't, would not be allowed under the zoning ordinance as a primary use, so it has to be combined with the hotel as a secondary use. This is Marta. Can I speak at this time? Go ahead, Marta. Okay. Um, 
what we were concerned about is this uh, plan development kind of zoning when you link these two properties together. How long does that stay plan development? Is, is this set up a grandfathering situation for that property? Should this business um, not stay for hereafter? Um, what are the implications in the future when you link these two properties together? Um, plan development just stays in place and what kind of precedence might this set up for any of the other properties around our CBC? Uh, this, this zoning would, would stay in place and run with the land if it were in fact to be rezoned to the P district. Um, as for the implications of the other parcels, um, you know, they're governed to the zoning, to their current zoning. I guess a P distinction is unclear to us. You know, R is residential and I is industrial, um, C is commercial, but can you give us a feel more for what that P might all incorporate? Could I say a few words at some point, David? It's yeah. Lynn Strobel. Hi, Lynn. Yeah, this, sure. I was going to say, David, the, the point of this discussion was to just clarify some comments on David's presentation. And we're going to go into the full task force discussion after um, Lynn and the nominator make a propose, uh, make a presentation. So if we could just have um, the zoning questions and things like that will be addressed in the later part of um, I'm sure Lynn's presentation, we can come back to it at the end. Uh, but the point of this discussion was to just get some clarification and then we'll have um, Ms. Strobel um, uh, present her piece. Right, but if if, Lynn, if you if have a, might... if you can you have, if you can clarify the question sure. if you have a, an answer that I would be happy specific to. to the question yeah I will go try. ahead I will try and I may not I may not given how the evening is gone but I will try um, the first thing I just wanted to say because um, Kathy in my office had the opportunity to take a look at the board motion that authorized um, this nomination. And I just want to be clear that it was on the parcel that you see there on the map, 5C2, that that is the subject of the nomination, the amendment. Now, the amendment did say to be developed in conjunction with that adjacent parcel, 5C1. And, you know, these parcels have been linked together for a very long time. Today, they're part of one rezoning application. So they were rezoned together. So I guess I don't see it being unusual that they would proceed together as a part of one application should this property at 6235 Brandon Avenue be developed. So I just wanted to kind of point that out. They're really already joined under a single zoning application today they would be modified together. Now, with regard to a P district, it doesn't really operate differently as a zoning classification than, again, what it is today. Those two properties- What does P today, stand for? It stands for planned. So it's planned. What we probably would file for is called PDC, Planned Development Commercial. Um, and we can look at other approvals that have been done in Springfield that may or may not be a P district. I can't recall if one or both of the hotels that are on Old Key Mill Road, they may be a P district. But that having been said, you know, it's it's just a classification. Both properties would be proffered as they are today. So today you can only develop in accordance with that approved plan unless modified. We are trying to modify that plan by going through a rezoning, but again, that would be proffered until such time as it's amended. So I don't know if that helps, but I wanted to put in some of the information. Those properties, like I say, they're already joined together today. Right. Thank you. All right. I, I hope that answers the question, uh, or at least comes close. All right. Who who else uh, has a hand raised? I see a Kim Jordan has her hand raised, so I will unmute you now, Kim. 
Sorry, actually, that was, um, that was a hand raised from early when we first started the meeting. So I have no questions currently. Thank you. All right. If you could okay. click on the hand to just take your, your hand down then. Okay. And, and, and Bruce as well, unless you have something new. Uh, anybody else? I see, uh, I see Dale. John. Oh. Uh, Gail Gail Niddle, if you if you still wanted to call on uh, members of the public, Gail Niddle. Yes, 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 I do. Okay, go ahead, Gail. Okay, thank you. Good evening. I uh, have two questions. The first, I would address the first presentation, the staff presentation. What has changed in the objections the staff had initially about how well this project would fit into the uh, guidelines it had? What's changed? And then the second one would be to Doug Losher. Uh, we, Marta and I, that is, have walked by that hotel where the plaza is planned. Uh, has the hotel been asked whether they want a plaza and who would pay for it? Uh, the community certainly is, is in the dark about it. Um, just wondering. I can probably try to answer the first part of the question about, um, about what's um, changed. I mean, Yes, this 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 current the use of self storage is not recommended by the comprehensive plan, but you know other we've we've done research on modern self storage that it, you know that's that's designed to look more like an office building, have ground floor active uses, which something a modern self storage that has those features will meet some of the objectives of the comprehensive plan in terms again ground floor active uses and again to to look to not look like a self storage facility uh, david this is um liz Hag. if i could add gail um i think when this initially was nominated as i think lynn said it was just originally uh 5c2 and the idea uh, when, when it became clear to implement such a thing through the zoning, um, it had to be the secondary use, not the primary use. We began to look at this larger site and the importance of branded and commerce and thinking that by bringing these two pieces in, we could uh, move towards some actual revitalization benefits for uh, Springfield. The corner plaza, the streetscape, um, some of the things that are so important at, at Commerce Street, which is one of the, the few pedestrian connections we have over uh, to the other side. So we began to see maybe there was some possibilities and th that some benefits that might make this palatable. Um, I mean, and, and we have to still, of course, Look at the design and the mix of uses on the side, environmental benefits, et cetera. But it's it it has to be viewed as an overall package. Uh, part of the question, uh, Liz, was uh, regarding uh, was you know who who would pay for these this plaza if it were to come to be, and is the hotel on board with that? The hotel is on board and being part of the rezoning application. I'm sure um, Lynn can speak more to that. Um, the, the improvements would be um, by the applicant, um, you know, in, as part of the rezoning. So we don't we don't see the the hotel coughing up uh, the monies for that. That would be something that would be part of the rezoning application um, by the self storage. So basically, the developer of the self storage would would yep. be footing the cost of the improvements in front of the hotel. That's okay, correct. thank you. All right, appreciate that. All right, do we have any other questions or comments from members of the public? Uh, this is Doug Lusher. I just wanted to make sure I answer the other part of Gail's question about the uh, oh the sure, I'm sorry, uh, and and just to. Uh, go back to what I had said earlier in the presentation, Gail, is that the, the word plaza is not strictly defined within the plan. 
but what it does seem to bridge is for placemaking and gateway features uh, to be added at that intersection as an important entrance to the commercial area. It may be that at one point the hotel addressed some of that with a fountain that was part of the walkway, which is no longer there, as we know. Uh, so there's no set idea of what a plaza or plaza features would be. Uh, and I think that would be part of the process of identifying, is there a benefit, a revitalization benefit to upgrading the streetscape and that corner uh, to provide more for the community uh, to balance out what the rest of this use that is proposed. So I hope that helps a little bit. Thank you. All right. Uh, <clears throat> again, anyone else from the from the public with questions or comments? I see a Diane Bowton. I think it may be. Uh, so I can unmute her for you, Ed. Okay. Yes. Go ahead, please. Um, has the uh, question of maintenance of Augusta Road along the eastern section of that parcel, is that being addressed as well by the applicant or by anybody? I'm sorry, can you is hear me? <laughs> Yeah, we, we, we can hear you. I'm just waiting for someone to come up oh. with a response. <laughs> so, thank you. So, uh, at this point, this is Tom Burkham with the Department of Transportation. At this point in time, we have not had any discussions about asking, are you asking if it will become a public right of way? As far as we know, it will, it will remain a, a private roadway that's maintained by the applicant, but um, that's a concern we'd like to hear. And Tom, maybe this is Doug, if I could just add to what I understand is that uh, this would actually be a large part of the discussion at the next task force meeting that's going to really look more in depth at the transportation issues uh, that would include Augusta Drive. Thank you. All right, so um, in the interest of time now, I'm going to I'll be moving to the task force itself. Anyone from the task force with questions or comments? I see a number of hands up, at least a couple. I see Jonna and Tom Sachs. Uh, Jonna, go ahead. Yeah, I think I'm kind of caught back where Bruce was saying, I don't understand when this thing came before us three months ago, why you're saying zoning is the reason we had to connect these two, because I was on the original 1999 task force at that hotel. And we made the recommendation then to take it from four sided two story up to the two sided four story to start getting that build up image. And because at that time we were looking at heights, but I don't understand why before we were considering just a lot. And now it's been, you say zoning is requiring these two to come in together. I don't understand that. Uh, hi, this is David Stenson again. Yeah, the current zoning under the P district does not allow self storage as a primary use. So in order to build a self storage building up to a 3.0 floor area ratio, it would have to be the secondary use. So in order to implement it, the site would be at, would have to be combined with the hotel. So the hotel is the primary use and self storage is the secondary use. Because in a P district, self storage is not allowed as a primary use. So the P district is what's changed from June to now. No, can I, I wonder if I could add to that a little bit, David? Sure. And Jonna, this is Lynn Strobel. You know, when we first started looking at this, when we filed a nomination, you know, we were just trying to, you know, go forward seeing if this use was appropriate because we didn't know if this would even be accepted into the amendment process. We had not gone the next step of starting to look at how this would be rezoned, if that makes sense. And when we started looking at that, you know, that's when we started saying, well, how can we implement this? What would be the appropriate zoning classification? 
And what we ended up doing is looking at how they did it in McLean. And McLean, there's an office building and a self storage. And it's the same thing. It was zoned PDC with office as the principal use, the storage as a secondary use. And we kind of followed that as an example, if you will. Um, so that's how we're proposing to implement what we were kind of finally got after we finally got into the process. If that, you know, I hope that that helps to explain, you know, how we have evolved in this process. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, uh, Tom. Tom uh, Sachs. Yes. <clears throat> Go ahead. Yes. I guess I'm still confused about what the implications are of combining the two parcels into a P district. And I, to that perspective, what I want to make sure is that we don't inadvertently authorize other uses for the hotel site other than what's there now, because I've seen that happen before. Um, I, I think, and again, if I, if I, if you don't mind, David, I'll go ahead and take this, but so I, I hear what you're saying, but that for that exact reason, is one of the reasons why we're going to go through a rezoning application kind of concurrently with the plan amendment. So we are actually going to file a rezoning. And as you know, when we go through a zoning, we're going to have a proffered plan. What you see is what you get. So we're absolutely going to have to go through that process working with the Lee District Land Use Committee. And, you know, we have had discussions with the hotel. All we're doing is leaving the hotel as it is. We're not changing that use. You know, we may provide some additional aesthetics to the hotel. You know, I think that the county has asked us to look at this as a whole with regard to maybe some landscaping, different things to make it more attractive. Um, but no, that, that use is going to stay as it is. And that will be guaranteed, if you will, when we go through the rezone, because you'll see okay, everything so that we're doing. So 5C1 is being re, uh, rezoned as well, even That's though it's right. not changing. That's right. Okay, that and makes so, sense, thank you. And, and Tom, this is Laura Arsenault. In the plan text language, it will clearly call out which changes go on which tax map number. So it, it will state, you know, 5C2 will have A, B, C, D, and 5C1 will stay as is. So there won't be an opportunity to have that modified. Okay, um, I think it was uh, Leah had her hand up. Yeah, um, so a, a comment I'd like to make at this point is that having been involved with the changes to this land use um, 20 years ago, or a little more than 20 years ago, and uh, because it's such an island in itself, uh, it can't be a destination uh, like the hotel because it's, it's kind of hidden behind it. So you have to want to go to it. Um, the restaurant we thought at that time would be a good place or a good use of that land that never happened. So when the applicant came in with a storage facility, um, and when I kind of looked at this land again, it was essentially hidden behind uh, good uses already. And to me, that made sense then to have something of this kind of use in this land. Um, I don't see after so many years anything else happening here. And in, in truth, I'd like to get some use um, where we wouldn't have parking issues or vagrant issues in the area. So um, combining this with the hotel as a secondary use, which also helps in planning the facades of the storage facility, if this actually gets voted on, 
uh, I think is a good use. Otherwise, we're going to be sitting here with a vacant lot um, for another 20 years. And um, I just don't think that's good for the community at large. Um, so uh, that's all I have to say at this point. Thank you. Hi, Ed. We're coming up on the 830 uh, Yeah, I, I see that. Uh, yeah. So, so, yeah, we're going to need to move along. I do see there was a, a, a question from Carol on the chat. Map shows Augusta behind residential and office buildings. How does it fit in with storage site? Uh, I don't know if anybody wants to quickly address that before we move to um to Lynn's presentation. Um, this is Laura Arsenault. We're going to talk a lot about the streetscape um, at the next meeting, and I think that will be covered at that point if that's okay to defer that. Okay. Until, yeah, until let's time. let's defer that. I hope Thank that's you. okay with Carol. All right. So um let's move along to Lynn. Uh, Lynn, thank mm -hmm. you for being patient and, and for your contributions thus far. Thank you very much. I appreciate it again, Lynn Strudel, um, and I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Um, I have been working with the property owner um, of this parcel that we're considering for self-storage for quite a number of months now. We filed the original nomination in December of 2019. Uh, we did present it to this, this group um, asking for a recommendation. And while it was recommended to be included as a part of the amendment process, um, it was put on pause and it really was put on pause to allow us to work with the community. So I'm actually going to turn it over to Kathy Taylor in my office because she has been the one who has really been working with the community on this. And she's going to talk just a little bit about the evolution of this proposal. You know, we kind of started in one place and working with the community ended up in another uh, through our, you know, by looking at the architecture. We've also worked a lot with staff. So we will try very hard not to be repetitive in our remarks, but just uh, kind of talk a little bit about what we envision on the side. So Kathy, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to you. And while you're loading your presentation, hopefully David or Steve can recognize her as the presenter. So while she's loading that up, I will say that we have been in communication with the owner of the hotel, as was mentioned, uh, they are aware of what we are proposing and working on an agreement with them and we would be responsible for you know improving the aesthetic and making sure that the hotel and the proposed use you know work together uh in the way of um you know visual um so kathy i will turn it over to you to make our presentation thank you thanks Great. Thanks, Lynn. It's a pleasure to be here with you all this evening. Can everybody hear me okay? And can you see my screen? Yes, we can both hear you and see your screen. Perfect. So I will try to not be repetitive, as Lynn mentioned. Um, as we've already discussed, this is the uh, site area that you're looking at. It's approximately 1.42 acres and it is zoned C6 currently. And as we mentioned, it's approved for a freestanding restaurant. Um, that was approved back in 2000 in conjunction with the adjacent hotel site. Um, and they were previously rezoned together as Lynn had mentioned. So while the hotel parcel, you know, was developed and constructed and is the town, town place suites that you see today, the subject property has remained vacant. So here are a few pictures of the site as you see it today, as staff discussed, the current comprehensive plan recommendation or designation is for office use up to 120 square feet. Um, and it is recognized as a location as a gateway feature in the Franconia Springfield area. I will note that previous attempts to attract an office or retail user um, have failed due to the site's physical location right there next to I-95, as you can see in the lower picture, and because of economic feasibility. So at this stage, the nomination is, um, or the nominator is proposing a comprehensive plan amendment, which would allow to keep the office use as currently designated, but would provide for an option for alternative non-residential uses, specifically a self-storage that would also include accessory ground floor uses in an, at an FAR of 3.0. 
So, so to, to implement, I apologize, the proposed comprehensive plan amendment would require coordination, as we mentioned, with the existing adjacent hotel parcel. And those discussions, as Lynn mentioned, have already begun and are actively ongoing with the adjacent hotel owners. So the image that you see on this slide reflects a proposed design that is a product of close collaboration with the community, specifically the Springfield Civic Association and its board. Uh, the proposed use, which integrates an attractive self storage use with a component of community oriented mix of uses on the ground floor will create a pedestrian centric use. And I think that does go a little bit, you know, we'll talk about this more at the next meeting, but that does go to how this use would be compatible with both the existing and um, office as well as residential surrounding uses. I know one of the questions is why self storage, um, you know, why would you put self storage in this location? And part of the extensive collaboration with the community included uh, working with them to understand how and why self storage would in fact make sense on this site. Um, as uh, I believe Miss Miss Lamba Skidmore mentioned, this would be a low traffic impact would have a low traffic impact. In comparison to an office use, it would generate lower parking requirements and would be community serving. It would um, also have a low impact on municipal resources, minimizing the use of roads and infrastructure. As you can see, utilities, um, sewer, power, water, um, and would have minimal to no impact on the schools. So our market research has shown that um, in terms of customers, Self storage is a great fit for this site due to the high local demand and the so low supply of this use in the proximate vicinity. Uh, there, I believe there is greater than 8,000 residents that um, appear to be searching for self storage every month in Springfield, where 10% of those households use self storage at any given time and 66% live in the single family homes. And you know, in this day and age of, of the pandemic that we're living in, a lot of people are working out of their home. Um, they're needing that extra space to, to store things. People are moving, doing a lot of home renovations. And so this stuff, this self storage has become more of um, a phenomenon and something needed within within the community. And you do have people that are storing goods for their relatives. So for all these reasons, self storage would be a productive and attractive use for this site. You know, there was uh, some discussion about building prominence and, and, you know, how this building would relate and look to surrounding uses. So we've provided here a few images of what the building would look like at the intensity being proposed. You have that gateway view from Commerce Street Bridge. Um, you can see how it would look in relation to the hotel site from the intersection of Commerce Street um, and Brandon Avenue. And then you'd also see how it would relate to the, the next door office building right there on Augusta Drive. So part of this proposal would be to incorporate ground floor accessory uses. And again, I think this is how you would um, allow it to relate to the residential as well as office uses that are surrounding. And so the desire is to activate the store, the storefront and pedestrian, or sorry, the street front and the pedestrian realm with spaces that would be unique and different and interesting. Specifically, we would wanna make these spaces available for small retail businesses, um, or that can support local entrepreneurs with maker spaces, business incubators, you know, art studios, or community rooms. So currently the nominator is proposing approximately 2,700 square feet of space for these ground floor uses, allocating approximately 900 square feet for three separate spaces. Um, the plan would be to offer these spaces at, um, at, a market, at less than market rate to truly help entrepreneurs or soft businesses to be able to launch successfully. So this idea of an urban self storage model is not new to secure space who would be the developer. Um, below are a few examples of projects they have either completed or are in the process of de developing nationwide. As you can see here, they have successfully been able to, to integrate self storage, integrated self storage model with a component of retail and or community oriented mixes of uses to better fit into a pedestrian oriented neighborhood. So you can see they've added art studios, office spaces, maker spaces, um, small retail. And specifically, we were actually able to tour um, that lower left uh, facility. It's in Camarillo, California. 
And so we did a virtual tour to, to understand how these maker spaces would work and how they would function and integrate with the self storage. And then um, on the flip side, we were able to also visit the self storage piece, you know, see the security, the landscaping, um, the dumpsters, all of those kind of important questions of, of how this type of space would be safe and secure, climate controlled, things of that, that nature. We shared that with the community. We did that as a community meeting. Correct. So we met and um, spent about an hour or so going through the site and kind of experiencing it firsthand. So at this location, um, the, nom the nominators team has actively, as I mentioned, worked with the community to develop a design that's in line with local examples. Um, that have also successfully incorporated an urban self storage design. So, as you can see here, uh, we took a look at McLean, the McLean site, as well as Arlington. And as I understand, um, the SCA also had board members go out and look at these two sites, take in architectural features, things that they appreciated about these different sites, the windows, you know, just uh, the, archi the architectural. Um, articulation of the, the roof line, the awnings, etc. And so this kind of shows uh, the feedback that was provided to us. So the top left shows what we had previously provided in our um, presentation, I believe when we went back to the task, when we went to the task force initially and when we brought this before the, the planning commission. And then as you heard, we kind of got a directive to work with the community to refine the design. And through those conversations, we have come to the proposal that you see on the on the bottom right. So we went through several iterations of the design. And ultimately, the nominator actually hired the the same architect that had done the McLean site. And that's how we came up with the design that you see. Uh, today, and we worked again, work, work closely with the community to who provided their productive feedback and we uh, revised this design as you see it. So we do believe this design will be a real positive in downtown Springfield as evidenced by the tremendous um, investment in the property's building materials and articulate um, architecture. Uh, we, do, we do think that it will fit in the context of the downtown Springfield CDC and it will provide an urban pedestrian oriented community serving use um, that will incorporate you know, what, what David, or sorry, Doug had mentioned we can incorporate that lighter color palette or um, as well as providing that creative use of brick and glass and high quality masonry materials. So kind of just to sum up, you know, as was mentioned, this is an underutilized vacant site that currently produces no economic value. It's been, it's been vacant for a number of years. Um, as we mentioned, there is research that show there is a high demand for self storage, um, but there is a low supply. So we do believe this is an attractive solution, 100% climate controlled self storage with um, ground floor neighborhood retail that will really activate that streetscape as well as uh, bring in new businesses, new, bring in new small businesses specifically um, and help um, kind of be a business incubator if, if requested. And as we mentioned, Secure Space is a top operator. They focus on security and safety and is one of the top rated operators in every market it serves. So in the end, we do believe this nomination presents an opportunity to redevelop and activate an underutilized parcel. And we've actively worked with the community to create a high quality attractive building that will attract neighboring residents, small businesses, and visitors as it will promote economic investment in this portion of the Springfield CBC and will invite a, diver a diverse population of consumers. So that concludes our presentation. We do have our architect as well as the developer on the line. So if there is any further questions or you'd like us to articulate on some of those design features um, that we've revised and, and worked on, we're happy to do so. But thank you for your time. Okay, thank you, Catherine. Um, okay, so, uh, are there any questions uh, from the public, questions or comments? Uh, again, please, if there are, please raise your hands. 
I'm seeing none. Uh, I don't know, Steve, do you see any? I, I see one now. Oh, there's uh, one. Yeah. Yep. Diane, go ahead. I, hi, I just wanted to clear up something I'm a little confused on because um, I was part of the, the uh, group that helped with the design features of the new um, presentation that she had there. But then we had another meeting with Doug Losher and somebody else where they said that, you know, they would be modifying the building. So even though um, we were just shown one one building, what the building looks like is still up for um, discussion for the, the warm contemporary or modern. Is that correct? Well, I, I think that we've had some discussions with staff, but at this point, we have not modified the architecture that we've shared with the community. If we were to do that, we would come back to the community to discuss that. So we have not changed it at this point. Okay. So basically, I, I I think the issue here is that nothing's final till it's finalized, but uh, but this is what the pr proposal is currently. It, and this it is, is what and you I, expect it to remain. It, well, we would come back. I, I know that the, right. the county staff, I think, is interested in a more urban design that shared that with us. But if we were to do that, we would come back and share, you know, talk to the community about it and see what their thoughts are. And we would definitely have to do that with the rezoning. Thank you. I see Bruce Wagner has his hand up. Thanks, Ed. Lynn, uh, just a uh, forewarning, I have a sense that the signage would be a problem. Okay. Because of all the buildings uh, depicted, I don't see any signage that, uh, and that would be a problem, I think. So be, be wary of that because the committee has been tough on signage in the past. And the community would be too. We, you know, we don't want a glaring neon sign that says, hey, self storage here, even though you have a beautiful building, you have an ugly sign. So that, that's just a you know, heads up. I'm sure you, you think about these things. Thanks very much. Thank you. And thank you. And signs right. will thank definitely be a detail we'll take a look at during the zoning process. We're, we're kind of trying to get through the plan amendment first, but we'll definitely focus on that with the rezoning. Okay. All right. Thanks. I see no other hands from the public. Um, that being the case, we will move to members of the task force. Any members of the task force? I see, uh, oh, by the way, I should note that uh, Don Tennant, who was not here for the roll call, has been here for most of the meeting, um, and I see he has his hand up. So Don and uh, Tom Sachs, and I see Marta also. So Don, go ahead. Okay, I, I have just a comment, and that is with regard to the architecture. Uh, there is nothing in Springfield that's red brick. It looks like Old Town Alexandria. And it's uh, amazing that that is something that the committee has requested or community, I mean, has requested. But I would certainly ask you to look at that. That corner, there is nothing that is not a solid facade of the mason. There's no masonry at all, no bricks for sure. And there's nothing to cross the street in either direction. So I would suggest that that should be discussed with the community and make sure that that Springfield Town Center really wants a red brick building that looks like Old Town Alexandria in that location, um, which is a prominent location, clearly visible in that picture from the bridge. You're looking at a red brick building surrounded by by uh, precast concrete facades. I appreciate the comment. What is um, I'm trying to remember Mike's American restaurant. That's yes. a brick, isn't that? Yes, red it brick? is. That is, it is, but it's a far distance from that location. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Thanks, Don. And, uh, so, uh, Tom, and then Marta. Lynn, I'm not Tom? sure who you're talking to as members of the community, but mansard roofs were popular from 1860 to 1880. I think the building makes Springfield look old and worn out. 
I would like to see something more angular that ties in with the town square suites rather than all the red brick and mansard roofs and old fashioned looking things, which are not what the town square suites are or even the office building next to it. That looks totally out of place. And I've lived in, I moved to Springfield in 1963 and grew up here. And I just, I'd have to vote against it if it looks like that. <laughs> we will continue to work with the community and look at the architecture. Thank you. But who is, Thanks, your, who is the community you're working with? We're working with Springfield Civic Association. We've been, we've had a number of meetings with the Springfield Civic Association. Okay, I don't know that they're the right people. Well, they're right. our closest neighbor. Um, and I think we were really directed to work with them to have the benefit of their input. So, but, but I would, I, I would also ask the, the business leaders. I wouldn't limit it to 1 group. Because there are a lot of people who are stakeholders in Springfield itself. All right, thanks, Tom. Uh, speaking of the Springfield Civic Association, Marta, you're up. Thank you. Um, my comments are really going to the presenters before and not the nominator presentation. If, if that's okay to speak to that or have my concerns and questions at this time for them. Well, let's. Um, we, we don't have much time, but why don't you quickly state what you want to state? Okay, so, thank you. Please go um, ahead. First off, Tom, yes, definitely Civic Associate, Springfield Civic Association is one of the groups that should be addressed as we have residential houses that were are within 200 yards of this property. So it, it definitely impacts our community and our residents. Um, Earlier, though, I, I do want to thank you, Tom, for the comment that you made, because I am uneasy about um, making the nature of this proposal being an industrial use acceptable just because we put it under the umbrella of another property. So, you know, rezoning is one thing and the nature of the business that's being proposed is, you know, another issue, too. Um, I don't think any of us have a crystal ball. We can't say that it could be another 20 years before something goes in. And it was said, you know, as an absolute before. And I, I just want to say that there is no absolute and no crystal ball that we know whether this, this property will have no interest for the next 20 years. Um, and uh, Leah touched on vagrancy. That is a problem that the Springfield Civic Association was called in with one of the other uh, plazas next door. Um, uh, like the rest of the county, there is a, an issue about vagrancy. And my question here is that if that corner of Commerce Street in Brandon is made to be a public space, is that then going to possibly remove the authority of the hotel from asking a vagrant to please leave that that um, property. If it's a private property, then you can request that uh, someone leave your property. If it is public uh, space, you may not ask to remove somebody um, who might be encamped there. So that is my question. I, I think that if that were to become some sort of a public plaza, it would be a plaza with a public easement. The hotel would still be the owner and would have the right to, you know, in addition to maintaining it, they would have a right to ask someone to leave. So I, I, we certainly can work through that with Fairfax County, but that would be my vision of how to make that accessible to have an easement, but still. Absolutely, the hotel would retain ownership and control. Thanks. Uh, Jim Drinkard. Yes, thank you. Um, I've got a question. I don't know whether this is more for county staff or for the, the nominator, but it has, and it goes back to the signage thing that we mentioned a minute ago. If, if the whole point of this design exercise is to make this not look like self storage. How do you keep from undermining that by with signage? Uh, 
uh, it, I'm a little concerned that it's sitting right next to I-95 or 395, and it is, uh, even if even if you build Versailles there and it says self storage, that's that that defeats the purpose of what I think Springfield is trying to portray itself as. Um, what are the limits on that, and what is the staff? What can the staff say about uh, trying to keep from have the sign having the signage be self defeating and what we're trying to do? So this is Laura Arsenault. The signage is a function of the zoning ordinance about how big it can be and um, that type of thing. Can't regulate what's on the sign. We can't really get, regulate um, how big. Um, I would say that that would come up more during the rezoning process than during the plan amendment. Um, but your concern is heard loud and clear. Um, but that would be details that would probably be worked out further along in the zoning application and not necessarily the plan amendment text, which is what we heard tonight. Well, I appreciate your your acknowledgement that it is key to the the point of your whole design exercise. Yeah, but I think Jim, you're absolutely right. There's going to have to be a balance there. I mean, it is a business, and I think as a business, even if it were an office building, it would have some type of sign. But you're right; it's going to be a balance about appropriate identification, but in a way that doesn't undermine what we're trying to achieve. Thank you. Um, I I have a question. Carol, you, I, I see your actual hand. Go, I'm go on ahead, my Carol. iPad and can't figure out how to put up a, my electronic hand. Uh, I have a, a question in the design. Uh, you show uh, first, like the first floor, ground floor retail. It had like a coffee shop, a pizza place, you know, some sort of little shops and all. And my question is, this is not a, a parcel that's easy to get to. It backs up. It's surrounded on one side by the interstate and a hotel and an office building and a street in front. It has, yes, it want, you want it to look good coming over the Commerce Street Bridge, but nobody, you don't see it would be would those uses be for the people who are there for storage or the hotel? How would one get to that or even know it's there? I mean, it's kind of an isolated location. I don't, I'm a little confused on how that all would work. And we're actually not sure exactly who will be taking that space. It could be community space. It could be a retailer. It could be, you know, a business that's trying to get started an incubator mm -hmm. space. Um, but you're right, if it were a coffee shop, we think that there would probably be patronage from the hotel, uh, probably from the office building that's across the way. So we really are going to have to see what the market is uh, when we are a little bit further along in this process. But we think it could be a variety of what I'm going to call community spaces. Um, could be retail, it could be some other things. Because even though it's part of the CBC, it's not central to the Correct. It's business right. district. Right. It's tucked away in an obscure corner almost. You're absolutely right. It 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 has some challenges. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank, thanks. All right. I see no new hands uh, on the task force. So, uh, Marta, I assume your hand is up because you just never took it down. Is that right? Correct. I'll take it down. Thanks. Okay, <laughs> thank you. And I did see there was one hand up still in the community, so I will go to Greg, or excuse me, Gail Niddle. Uh, Gail, are you there? Yes, yes, I am. Go ahead, Gail. Thank you. Uh, I am with the Civic Association, Springfield Civic Association, I'm president of it. And I have to say that I was taken back by the comments of one of your members that maybe we were the wrong people to be talking to. Supervisor Lusk encouraged us to work with the, uh, with the owner and we did hours, hours and hours. And I have to say the owner was very accommodating and we went out to the community. We passed out flyers to the community to, to be part of this process. 
the community is all brick houses. Uh, what the town center does is one thing. I'm not sure who the business leaders are that this gentleman was referring to, but we've certainly not seen any of them come forward in this process. Um, again, I was very taken back by those comments. I think that um, what we do in Springfield is, is important to people who live here. And if, if that's an old fashioned look, well, then I guess McLean chose an old fashioned look, Arlington chose an old fashioned look and other places did too. And it seems to work for them. I don't know why it can't work for us. I know that's still a matter for further discussion, but, but uh, you know, we live here in Springfield. I don't know where this gentleman lives now, but we tried to incorporate anybody who was interested in this community in the process. Again, uh, kudos to the owners of property for being so accommodating and uh, listening. That's all I have to say at the moment. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm seeing no uh, new hands and I'd like, up. I'd like to. Oh. I'd like to say something. Go, go ahead, Tom. I'm sorry if I offended you, but every other development we've worked on over the last 30 years. It's been more than one civic association that's been included. The Springfield Chamber of Commerce is who I was referring to. And there are other communities around the whole central Springfield area. And since this is going to be the entry to downtown Springfield, I think it ought to be more than just your community, which isn't really even, it's very impacted by it, but you can't really see it from it the way you can from the downtown Springfield crossing the Commerce Street Bridge from 95. So yes, it looks, it's brick like your community, but your community is past the office building and isn't really an immediate neighbor in the sense that you can't see them at the same time. Okay, so I think that's something that there's just a disagreement about. Tom, thanks for uh, clarifying uh, your remarks and Gail, thanks for uh, for speaking up for the uh, Springfield Civic Association. Okay, um, see no, I don't think there are any new hands. Uh, it is now nine o'clock. So anybody has anything, last thing they wanna say, please speak up now. Otherwise, I think we're about to adjourn. Um, this is Laura Arsenault. David, would you just give a quick overview of what to expect for next, um, Meeting. I just want to make sure everyone has a heads up of what we're talking about next time, David. Sure. At the next um, task force meeting, which is um, October October eighteenth, we'll be discussing uh, streetscape and uh, transportation as well as uh, community benefits. Okay. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you to uh, David and. Everyone else from staff who who contributed, thank you to uh, the, the nominator and to, uh, to everybody who contributed on that side um, and all our members and the members of the public. Um, we will reconvene on October 18th. Thank you very much. Thank Good you night. for your time tonight. We appreciate it. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, Ed. You're welcome.